Hello everyone, thank you for coming to check out this video. Today I'll be talking about Python list comprehension, which is a little bit more of an advanced topic, but the way in which I'll teach it will be in such a way that even beginners will be able to understand it. In fact, there's probably a lot of people out there that find Python list comprehension, list comprehension to be confusing, but I guarantee you that after this video, you're going to, to probably fall in love with it and start using it more and more in your code. Now, why do I feel that way? Why do I feel as though I can teach it at the level that even a beginning programmer can, can make use of it? Here's why. When I was early on learning Python, I took a course that was well over my head. It was actually taught by one of the core developers for Python. Not the folks that just write code in Python. These are the folks that write the Python code. They create it, they make it work. Right? So when you download Python 3.7 or whatever it might be, those folks are the ones that are making that. Right? So this Python core developer um, comes out to RTP, North Carolina, and I went to his course. Early on, like halfway through day one, I realized that I probably didn't belong in the course. However, I did everything I could to try to, to grasp whatever it was he was teaching. I tried to write down notes and learn it on my own after the fact. One of the topics that seemed to be a big hit with everyone in the class was Python list comprehension. So when I realized that everyone in the class, all these data analytics folks, legit developers, people that are actually like, that's their job. There were some developers in there. Um, they really liked the Python list comprehension stuff. I realized like, okay, this is something that I need to learn. So I set out to do that. And I learned it in such a way that um, really, really, really made sense to me. And, and that was with me knowing barely anything at all. So um, I hope to be able to deliver that back to the community and let other folks, you know, capitalize on on the same way that I do this, right? So in this video, we'll talk about what is Python list comp comprehension? How does it help your code? And we'll go into talking about what type of uh, material I'll be using in this video. And we'll also take a look at um, uh, for loops, how we can make the for loop turn into a single line of code, which is Python list comprehension, and then move on to even more complex things like uh, putting conditional statements, if else statements inside of the list comprehension, and even doing nested for loops with conditional statements inside of the list comprehension. If any of that sounds a bit confusing to you, a little bit scary, just give it a try, watch the video, maybe come back, watch it again later, and try it out in your own code. If you find this to be valuable, if it's helpful to you, please hit the like button, share it with anyone else that you think would find it to be valuable. If there's still any confusion you're having, comment below myself or hopefully, you know, other folks can help you help, um, you know, clear any confusion that you might be having. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So like I said, some of the things that we'll talk about is what is list comprehension, why should we use it, and how can we do this easily? Python list comprehension is a loop, but it's a single line of code. So rather than having to do, you know, the for statement, and then the semicolon, and then start putting some of the lines of code underneath that within the loop, you do it all in just one line. And the loop is most often used to create a list, but we don't really have to use it only for that. In fact, I use it sometimes for doing print statements and doing it, you know, relatively quickly. And then also um, something to note is that we could write an entire script using list comprehension, but it wouldn't really go with the Zen of Python, right? Because Python, part of the Zen is that it should be easy to read. Why should we use the list comprehension? It's more Pythonic, it's easier to read, which goes in hand with the being more Pythonic, and also it can make our programs run faster at times. For example, if we're doing a for loop that does an append statement, um, that's going to run slower than if we were to do it in list comprehension, which is in part due to the way list comprehensions work. They don't look up the append attribute which allows for the list comprehension to do one less thing that actually takes up time and resources. So this is just a real quick thing that I wanted to throw in the video just to cover some things. Now we're actually going to jump into what everybody wants to do, writing the code, looking at it, seeing examples, and showing how this is done. All right, 
we needed to have some data to basically iterate over. So I made a list here and it's got a lot of different colors on it. It's a pretty long list, not that that matters, but that will be what we will iterate through in this video. The first thing that I'll do is I'll create a copy of this list. It will be a full copy. It'll be an exact copy. And I'll do it the old school way where when you are going to create a, a new list and use a for loop, you first create an empty list, which is what these two brackets are doing. And then you'll create your for loop and you'll say for item in my list. And specifically for this example, it's going to be for color in list of colors. Go ahead and append the color to this list. And what we'll do to take a look to make sure that it's doing what we want is I'll first do a print statement and we'll print out this line of text that says, Hey, here are the items in, in our list. And this is before the for loop is done. And then we'll do it again and we'll have it for after the for loop is done. Let's go ahead and run that and see how it goes. So we can see here items before and it's empty. It's an empty list still items after and it has all of the same colors that the list has up here. Now let's take a look at how we would do this using list comprehension. I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to get rid of this. I will put in a print statement for after list comprehension is done. And basically, here's how list comprehension works. You name your list, right? So named list, you put an equal sign. And then you have two brackets. And within that, what you're doing is an action for an item in my list, whatever your list is, it's going to have elements in it, or we will call them items. And we want to perform an action. But specifically the action when we're doing list comprehension, really the typically what people are going to do is an append. However, we don't want to actually call the append attribute, we don't want to, to to load that up. So what is our named list? It's this one right here. We already have the equal sign in the brackets. So we can get rid of that. What is the action that we're going to do? We're going to do a normal append. So we'll take the color out of here. And we'll just say color, right? So that's what we're going to do. And at this point, now, we just take our for loop and put it in here. And that that seems like a lot of moving parts at first, we'll do a couple other examples. And once we start doing the conditionals, like the if statements, and once we start doing the nested for loops, it might look a little bit better, it might make a little more sense for you. So stick around, don't leave just yet. Also, after the video is done, try this with some of your own code. Um, I can even put this this file up on GitHub if people want, and they can mess around with it as well. So now, Let's make sure that when we do our print statement, we're getting what we had earlier, the whole list here, All right? So we'll do run and look at that. We got exactly what we were looking for. There's not much use in that though. Who wants to get an exact copy, right? You could just use this list if you wanted an exact copy. So now let's move on to doing conditional statements where we actually modify the contents in a new list. And that way, we're getting something different. So here's what we're going to do now. We're still going to do it the old way at first where we make an empty list. And then we're going to do a for loop. And within the for loop, we're going to do an if statement, and we're going to append to the empty list that we just created. This time, we're going to have a shorter list, we're going to look for, um, we're going to iterate through the list looking at each color. And when we check the color, if the capital letter B is found, then we want to append it to our short list of colors. So essentially, what we should have is any color that starts with the capital letter B. So beige, black, blue and brown, we should have four different ones. And I'm going to print it out down here. So let's run it and make sure that it does exactly what we want it to do. Beige, black, blue and brown. 
right? So like we said earlier, you take the action and you put it at the front. So let's go ahead and put that here. Again, list comprehension by default will do the append without having to actually call append. And then now the slightly more complicated part we would think is so easy. You just simply collapse the uh, for loop and get everything on one line. So now here's our list comprehension to do the conditional statement looking for any uppercase B within the colors and then we print it out. So we should see exactly the same thing down here. And let's run it and make sure that we do. Look at that. Another thing, like I said before, is that I used, um, I would use the list comprehension to do print statements at times. So let's go ahead and try that out. Here, we're still doing action for item in list, and that action is going to be a print statement. So imagine a for loop with a print statement in it. And each time that it goes through and looks at a color, it's going to print each one in that list. We're still also only looking at the short list of colors, so let's go ahead and do that now. So as you can see, it does beige, black, blue, and brown, and it prints it out, right? So it's saying for each one of the colors, print it out. And I actually like the way this prints better than when it prints the uh, list all next to each other. Now with that done, let's get to the next level. Doing list comprehension with conditional statements and nested for loops. All right, here we have it. And let's take a look at what this is doing. Again, we're going through the old school way. This is going to be the name of the list that we want to create. And we're creating the empty list first. Then we're going to make our for loop where we iterate through our original set of data. And for each item in that list, uh, we're going to look for an exact match for the word blue, right? So we will only get one hit here. Once you find the color blue, check each letter in that color and append it to the list up here, right? We're going to append each letter to the list up here. And then we'll run the next section of code that's outside of this for loop where um, we are going to print out each letter. Let's run that and make sure that it does what we expect. Here we have BLUE. All right. So again, we're doing an append here. So that's our action. And because it's list comprehension, we don't need to call the append. We just put what we want to append. And that's the letter. So now what do we do? Same as before, we collapse it. And then we collapse it again, getting everything on the same line. Now we take all of this and dump it inside of our brackets. And at this point, let's run the script and make sure it does what we want it to do. BLUE, that's exactly what we wanted. Let me know in the comments below if you found this to be useful. If you like it, please click on the thumbs up here. If you think that other people would find value in this video, please share it. Let other people know about it. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more Python stuff on the channel later down the road. And again, right now I'm doing Cisco collaboration, but eventually I'll be doing um, Cisco routing and switching. I'll also start doing some Windows stuff and some Linux stuff. And of course, Python as well. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.